All right, well, once again, it's Organic Friday, and we are here to talk about amides, which are a class of organic compounds that I want you to be familiar with. All right, now, amides are derived basically from a carboxylic acid and an amine, and so you get this carbonyl group, and then the carbon in the carbonyl group is also attached to a nitrogen, so in essence, you have something like this, carbon all right, that's your amide linkage there that I just drew in red. All right, the carbon is double bonded to an oxygen. The same carbon is bonded to a nitrogen, which is bonded to whatever else it's bonded to. All these atoms are in the same plane. All right, so your goal basically is to be able to recognize this amide linkage. They are rather important biologically. You can see in the molecule I've got here, right, here's our amide linkage, all right, our amide group. Um, but they show up particularly in proteins. The peptide bond in a protein is an amide linkage. All right, you can see the carbon double bonded to the oxygen. It's drawn in a different orientation than what we saw on the previous slide. All right, the carbon is double bonded to the oxygen, and that carbon is bonded to a nitrogen. And we have these alternating groups as the amino acids get linked together. So that peptide bond is an amide group. And all the, car all the atoms in that peptide bond are all in the same plane, which is part of the reason why we get the distinct geometries uh, and conformations that we see with protein structure. Right. So, all right. another important class of amides. There are polyamides. We can make these into polymers. We can link them up. All right. Nylons are polyamides. Most nylons are polyamides, and they're a class of synthetic polymers that you all know about. All right, so the one that I've shown on this slide, this is nylon 6-6. There are lots of different nylon polymers. This is one particular nylon polymer. But you can see when the monomer groups get linked together. Again, here we have that amide linkage. So they're an important group. All right. In terms of their properties, I want to point out that the amide group can do hydrogen bonding. All right, we've got a hydrogen attached to a nitrogen here. That hydrogen, of course, because of the polarity of the bond, is almost bare of electron density. All right, it can attract electron density to itself from the oxygen on another amide. Or if it's a polyamide, whether it's a protein or nylon or whatever, this can happen with something further down the chain, all right, but you do get that hydrogen bonding, all right, so those relatively strong intermolecular attractions. And as a result of this hydrogen bonding, all right, most of the amides are found as solids, except for the very smallest one, methanamide, all right. The melting points tend to be high because they can participate in this hydrogen bonding, all right, stronger attractions. And the, the smaller ones, ones without really long carbon chains, do dissolve in water because they can have hydrogen bonding with the water. All right. Remember, our main purpose here is to be able to recognize the functional group and also, you know, recognize the features of it that determine what kinds of intermolecular attractions we can have. So that's really what I wanted to focus on here with the amides, All right. their ability to do that. Uh, that's how we're most likely to encounter them in AP Chem. All right. Now, we're going to name some very simple amides. It's actually pretty easy to do, all right? You look at the formula, and you find the longest continuous chain, whatever that alkane group would be, however many carbons correspond, all right? You take the E off at the end, put YL in the end, um, replace it with YL, add the word amide. Really very nice and simple. All right, so if we look at molecule A here, how many carbons are in this chain? There are three. That's right, Robert. All right, this would be carbon number one, the one closest to the nitrogen. All right, there are three carbons. What do we call a three-carbon group? So we could call this... Propyl amide. Yeah, that's it's that simple. All right, let's look at this one, molecule B. 
How many carbons? I've got them all drawn out here. There are six, six carbons. So what would that be? Excellent. All right. What about our third molecule? How many carbons? Five. So this would be? Pendulum. Excellent. Okay. So nice and simple to do. One last thing. Let's go in the opposite direction. If I give you a name, we should be able to generate a structure. All right. So if we have, oh, I think I've been, I think there may be more than one thing here because I'm just noticing now I've got it written out as butanamid. All right, not butyl. All right, so that's fine. Um, I better go look that up. All right, so if I've got butanamide, how many carbons are in my longest chain? I think butane it would be? Four. Four. All right, so we can draw, let's draw our carbon backbone. All right, carbon number one is attached to the amide group were attached to the nitrogen, all right? All right. And that's also where the carbonyl is. Yes. And what's on carbon 3? A methyl group. Are we good? And of course we should put all the hydrogens in. That's not too bad, right? We can do that. All right, we want to be able to name simple molecules.